so guys now we have come to the we have understood what least square functions is so now which is the next part of the understanding is as i explained in the last section we are going to try and understand what is gradient descent so as of now the trajectory is clear we have two variables we understand there's a linear relationship and then we want to plot a line between them because we think that there's a linear relationship now to plot a line we have the idea that there are two parameters that are important to that if we can define come up with beta naught and beta one then we know that we can come up with a straight line now how do we come up with beta naught and beta one is basically by plotting this curve uh by plotting this straight line uh so guys now back from now we are into the third session of the lecture which is into how to underdo the gradient descent thing now before this we have already kind of established why we need to do gradient descent we have explained the, the problem as such as of now which is that, that there are two variables we think there's a linear dependency between them that's why we want to plot a straight line between them now to do a straight line we need two parameters beta naught and beta one how do we come up with those uh well it's not an issue we just have this one condition that we need to fulfill which is basically the beta naught and beta one should be such that the deviation of the predictions from the error from the target value should be minimal right and to do that we basically have this to measure this particular deviation we have this cost function which we minimize and we basically come up with the theta naught and theta one values such that the cost function is minimized now how do we do this last part of it right which is basically coming up with the parameters theta naught and theta one such that my cost function is may minimize is the concept behind gradient descent you understand that you are absolutely thorough with linear linear regression right so there's nothing that you need to understand so what is gradient descent as i've already explained to you and i'm going to explain to you now fully on this slide particularly so there's this particular thing called cost function right so as I explained to you already, theta. So I've explained to you the nomenclature. So nomenclature is that there are multiple parameters like theta naught, theta one, so on and so forth. In in particular case, in linear regression where there's just one variable, there are just two parameters, right? If you want to have multi multivariate linear regression, there could be multiple variables. But in case of a univariate linear regression with which where y prediction equals to theta naught plus theta one x. There are just two variables right so then we have straight then we basically what we want to do is basically try and come up with this straight line right so this is theta naught and then the slope of this line is basically theta one right so our prediction line is like this and this is a y variable this is a x and this is what we want to come up with we want to come up with such that the, the deviations are minimal right so now the deviations are measured by the deviation function is y minus y prediction square which is equals to y minus theta naught minus theta one x square right so that's what it is and so now if we given that this is the thing that we want to minimize right so to minimize this as i said so we have to plot this so now let's look at how this particular thing looks for different values of theta naught and theta one so you have on this axis theta one and on this function you have cos c c is nothing but y original which is target y target minus theta naught minus theta one x whole square now there's an interesting thing if you actually expand this function you would basically see this is c is basically nothing but a into theta naught square plus some other constant into theta one theta naught plus some other constant into plus some other constant that's it right so that's how c would look like in terms of theta naught if you take if you that is basically you're taking everything apart from theta naught as basically a constant value if you take that you will basically see that this is of the same form if you do the same thing by taking theta one as a variable and rest of the things as constant you would have something like this as well a into theta one square plus b into theta one plus c Right, so this is a1 say a0 b0 c0 so this is some other constant a1 b1 c1 right so there could be different constant which basically says this uh, but the underlying concept is same right so your cost function is basically nothing but a, a quadratic function of your theta values right so then if you plot that this is how it would look like so please keep in mind that this is this is a plot between y versus x and this is a plot between cost function and the parameter now to do that what i'm saying is i basically want the corresponding value of theta naught such that my cost function is minimal right so basically i want to get this value of theta so this is a theta prime this is the one that you care about you want to kind of get this value of theta 
so one way is obviously as i have explained you basically do this you solve this equation right d of c of theta not equals to zero you basically solve this equation and you kind of come up with this particular value that's one way now that is that is that is one particular way of doing it and that's perfectly fine there's one another way which is very common and which is something that you will use up in a lot of uh, linear regression uh, you can basically solve the same problem in linear regression using this technique called gradient descent which you can also use in some other kind of algorithms specifically when you go to deep learning and all of that you will see that gradient descent is something which is extremely popular in case of deep learning so in this particular case there was one way where we solved in least square method we basically had this number of three four equations and we solved using them in this particular case this, we are just discussing another technique right so just don't get don't get worried so as of now what you have learned is basically the same thing you're trying to come at this particular value the one value is basically you can directly solve that now problem is if you have a lot of values right so in earlier case when we do simple linear regression we had two values right we had two unknowns and we had two equations and it's easy to solve two equations now imagine solving 100 equations or probably 50 60 equations right because if you have 50 60 variables right in this case there's just one y and there's this one x right but in case of uh, multivariate you would have one y but you would have probably 50 60 different x values right different features now in those cases there would be not only theta not theta 1 but there will be theta 1 theta 2 and till so on and so forth till theta 50 and in those cases if you are trying to solve 50 linear equations that might be a bit cumbersome so in those kind of cases we basically take another approach to solving the same problem this problem is called gradient descent now gradient descent if you want to understand the concept is very similar is very very simple imagine a ball so imagine a bowl like this right if you start a ball like this it would basically come down rolling 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 it would go up here then it would come down all the way here here and then slowly 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 it would basically settle down at this point right so that's basically the concept of gradient descent if you leave a ball at this curve it basically goes down 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 till it settles here right and this is the concept which is exactly the concept behind gradient descent so at every point in this curve you are basically this direction of movement of the ball is along the gradient along the direction of the gradient now gradient is basically the tangent to this curve right so at every point every point the direction in which the curve ball moves is basically nothing but the direction of the gradient right and that's what you basically want to do if you want to kind of come up to the minimum of this point you want to start off at any random point and from that point you move in the direction of the gradient right if the gradient says move this direction you move this direction then you come to some other point and then you move again in the direction of the gradient at that point and your assumption is that if you kind of keep on doing this you would basically kind of come up to this point minimum point right so that's the concept of gradient descent now how much do you move in the direction of this direction of the gradient that is something that is important right and that is defined by a particular parameter called learning rate learning rate basically says that how much do you move okay i get the point that i need to move in the direction of the gradient but how much do i need to move in the direction of the gradient so obviously you can have a very high learning rate where you move very vastly but the problem with that is if you move fast enough so you basically go here and then you go here and then you probably go again here right so you basically probably bounce back or oscillate a lot of times before you kind of come to the point the problem with a small learning rate is basically you kind of start 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 and move very slowly right but you would obviously not oscillate as much if you have a very high learning rate you go up and then again up and then again up and then again up right so you kind of have oscillate the oscillations a lot more time number of times so that is a concept of uh, as such behind gradient descent now to mathematically formulate that now let's again draw the curve first so this is please keep this in mind that this is a curve of this is a plot of cost versus theta right not y versus x your y versus x is a straight line right you're trying to plot that in case this is a plot of cost function versus theta so in case of cost versus theta so this is the curve and this is the minimum point that i want to get into and what i'm saying is at any point you start off with any particular value of theta you basically measure the value of cost function at that point you calculate the gradient the gradient is given by dc of d theta right at theta naught at that starting point right you calculate that you move a learning rate and you you basically what you am saying is 
this is your parameter and there's a parameter called learning rate so you basically this is the direction of the gradient and the direction of the gradient you basically move by the amount of times which is learning rate and once you move that you basically have your new theta theta new equals to theta s minus theta s is where you started off right so theta started off in the direction of so theta started theta nu is basically theta s which is your starting point minus small movement in the direction of your gradient right and you come up here right and then you again calculate this is your now theta s and you again calculate the same thing right at this point what is the gradient and then you calculate the movement in direction of that gradient and you come up to this point so that is the whole concept behind gradient descent so this is exactly the equation that I've shown you. So at every point, every iteration you do, you're basically, you're coming up with a new parameter theta, which is basically the old parameter theta minus the differentiation, the call, the direction of the gradient movement into the learning rate, right? And you can basically, uh, yeah, so the rest of the part of this algorithm is basically just saying that what the optional parts of it, which I'm sure you would want to kind of go through at your time. If you don't get it, Go and ask your instructor this is something which i personally think is something you should if you have a very basic if you have done maths and statistics any kind of maths kind of background in your class 11th or 12th you have calculus background this part is something that should be extremely easy for you to get there's nothing big in it so gradient descent is something that So now we are going to kind of come to the part where we are going to do the linear regression in SKLearn and then we are going to try and do the linear regression using gradient descent as well by writing the code from scratch, right? So first SKLearn, obviously the most important thing that SKLearn is, I think probably before we kind of get into everything, I want to kind of tell this thing that SKLearn, which is the scikit-learn, I'm not sure if you have used it in your previous sessions as of yet or not but if you are using this for the first time then there's a slight reminder that this is a library for implementing all of your machine learning utilities right so scikit-learn sklearn is the one that has houses all of the machine learning uh, you know powerhouses that powerhouse algorithms that can be used so we are going to use that to kind of implement sklearn so all of this gradient descent and finding the best cost function you don't have to do all of that right all you have to go do is basically take your x y pass that to this function and it would give you the best possible values uh, of beta naught and theta naught and theta one and you can just directly use that right so frankly you don't need to do any of those gradient descent or solving the linear equation nothing of that sort you don't have to write code for any of that so that's the best part about sklearn but while it offers you that whole easy ease of usage and all of that uh, one thing to keep in mind is that because of the ease of usage that comes along with it there's a very easy possibility and very high possibility of you kind of losing track of the entire algorithm right losing track of the things that you need to learn with along with the algorithm so obviously gradient descent and all of that is something that i would definitely recommend for you to kind of get through with um, although you don't need to understand that that deeply to kind of do that in sklearn right so that's that's a disclaimer but now let's kind of see what you have to do in sklearn to implement the scale the linear regression right so first you take your x and y which is nothing but your pandas data columns so now we are going to see how it is implemented in python uh, x is your lot area y is your sales so now we are going to import the linear regression model from linear model and then we are going to do regress equal to linear regression which is basically instanti instantiating the class and once we instantiate the class then we are just gonna call the dot fit function which is something that you will see so all of the machine learning algorithms that you would use in sklearn are basically structured in the same way you basically first call this class of function call this class of algorithm that you want to you first import that once you import that then you basically instantiate a class with that and once you instantiate a class with that you just say uh, class dot fit and that's it so once you do that then you can basically use dot predict uh, so there are a couple of functions which we'll probably see in a while so, but the, the, the structure of the all the machine learning algorithms that are implemented implemented in sklearn basically have the same structure if you want to do linear regression if you want to do some other very hi-fi uh, machine learning algorithm all you have to do is basically first import that it could be linear model it could mean some other uh, module as well 
uh, from SKLearn dot whatever module it is in, import the machine learning algorithm. Then you say some, you basically instantiate that in a variable, say model equals to that thing. And then you do model dot fit and in dot fit you pass X and your Y. Uh, so as long as you're doing supervised learning, this is exactly the same, same, same structure that you're going to follow. So then you basically, yeah, this is the second thing. If you, once you do dot fit, once you do dot fit, then you can basically do dot predict. And in dot predict, you basically pass the independent feature and you just get the dependent feature as an output. Uh, just to keep in mind one more thing that I wanted to probably mention which is that that we have discussed as of now two different ways to kind of do the uh, Finding out the values of theta naught and theta one right one very very first explained was the very one We used le method of least squares and we kind of solved linear equations And the second idea we discussed was gradient descent right so both of them are equally usable by le by default linear regression uh, Uses the first method that we have discussed which is basically solving the linear equations uh, you can basically use gradient descent as well. You, that's just a field that you have to kind of, that's just one of the possible options. So as long as you say that solver, probably it goes by the name solver or something, just check that. So once you specify the solver and you say that you want to use gradient descent as a method of optimization, then you will basically be using gradient descent. By default, as of this current version, uh, it does not use gradient descent as the by default solver. So... Then you do regressor dot predict. Once you do dot predict, then you can basically see that this is the straight line that you get, which is the one that you have come up with, right? So your machine learning algorithm has predicted for you. The just to kind of keep that entire thing in context, the point, the only thing that the machine learning algorithm did was basically come up with the values theta naught and theta one. How did it come up with it? It basically made sure that this for given that particular theta naught and theta one values, the deviation of the predictions from the target values was minimal right so that was the only condition that we had imposed on our machine learning algorithm and based on that condition that constraint it came out with the best possible values of theta naught and theta one so now we can very clearly see that that whole initial problem that we started off with which is, which is basically something that what is the ideal price of a 14,000 square feet house now we can clearly see that that's probably somewhere between uh, 200,000 to 225,000 right so that's it that's absolutely awesome right because we uh, we were earlier we were not very sure how to do it because we were not sure if there were just two houses if there were outlier houses exactly at 14,000 square feet what do we do with that right so we were thinking about ideas where we could take mean where we could take mode and all of that things right of all, of all the houses that are exactly at 14,000 square feet uh, so now we have solved all of that problem. We have come up with a straight line that kind of takes in context the entire data that is there. And based on the entire data, it says what is the best possible price for a 14,000 square feet house. Uh, so that's also, that's something we have solved. So now we are at the final part of the lecture of this particular session, which is the implementation of gradient descent in Python from scratch. So the idea is very simple. You first assume an initial theta. You calculate the prediction at that point. Based on the prediction, you calculate the error. Based on the error, you basically calculate the gradient at that point. And then once you calculate the gradient, you basically calculate the new value of theta. And you keep on doing this multiple number of times, right? So, so now let's just kind of understand that first again. So you start off with the theta, which is here. And for that particular theta, start say you calculate the c value right so this is a for you first you need to for calculating c you need to calculate y pred once you calculate y pred then you need to calculate c which is y minus y pred square right so for all possible values so first you have to calculate y prediction for all possible values then you calculate the cost function once you calculate the cost function then you need to calculate the gradient with respect to theta at this particular point theta s once you calculate that gradient then you need to basically do this your new star new theta is basically the corresponding theta minus alpha into dc by d theta and this is and once again you have the new theta you kind of go back and you keep on doing this whole process right so this is the whole thing that you need to keep on doing multiple times till you kind of come to the point where you see that the Gradient is zero, which basically means that you have come to the minimum most point, right? So that's the goal. That's what we have to achieve. 
So now let's see how that we implement. So first we'll have a function called error calculation, which is given a b, theta, x, and y. It will calculate the error, right? So remember this that we are basically starting off with a random guess of theta, right? And with a random guess of theta, we are basically gonna try and calculate what is the error, right? So for that, we first need to kind of get the corresponding predicted value. Once we get the predicted value, we calculate the error. So now we are gonna explain, we are now gonna do the gradient descent explanation. So first you start off with B and theta, which are your initial guesses for your theta naught and theta one. Once you do that, then you first use the gradient gradient calculation to come up with your new B and B and theta. Based on the new B and theta, you basically calculate the error. And once you calculate the error, this B and theta would basically be the old B and theta used to calculate the gradient, which gives you the new B and theta. And you kind of keep on doing this, right? So this is the whole point that we are, that of, uh, that we have been talking about, right? Log on to Grey Atom's learning platform to unlock more free content. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates.